30. I'm Dedrick Russell. Jamie has the night off. We begin this next half hour starting about a conversation about health. For most of us, going to the doctor isn't on the list of our favorite things to do. But men are significantly less likely than women to see a doctor. Only 60% of men go to the doctor for a yearly routine checkup, and 40% won't go until something is seriously wrong. It's part of the reason why June has been declared National Men's Health Month. It's something Roger Hoyle is diligent about doing. He's a small business owner, husband, and father of four who lives in Matthews. Late last year, he had a health scare. Now he's sharing his story to encourage all men to take charge of their health. From lying in a hospital bed. Can you smile? Thank you. Raise your eyebrows. Hey, sir. You? Sir. To walking and talking with ease. So Just by looking at him now, you wouldn't really know Roger Hoyle had a stroke seven months ago. It's quite an experience. It was, uh, it was very surreal. The first sign was his inability to recall certain words in a conversation with his wife, Marilyn. I remember like being in the kitchen making eggs and just thinking, oh, Roger, do you want cheese in your eggs? You know, just a very casual day. And um, just his speech was very different. Roger's symptoms became more intense very quickly. I started stumbling um, against objects say on the right side of the room so trash can in the kitchen instead of me uh, being able to determine that it was um, you know the distance from my body I actually was knocking into it my wife just said that um, you know I think something is maybe wrong I think we need to go to the doctor and get you checked out she also noticed um, one side of my face was starting to droop just a little bit Marilyn knew she needed to act fast the kids were still all like in their sweats and pajamas and and it was immediately like I was like, you know, grab your shoes, get in the car. Roger was taken to Novant Health in Matthews after administering a brain scan. That scan was instantly read by AI technology, which alerted neurosurgeon Dr. Zi Page. A software system called VizAI here at Novant. It's a tool that detects blockages on CT scans and instantly notifies every stroke specialist on their cell phone. It enables care teams to spring into action when necessary. But you're able to actually pull the images and look at them on your smartphone. Whereas a few years earlier, when we didn't have that device, you were waiting and refreshing the computer, either a desktop or your laptop at home, refreshing until the study was done. You'd have to log in, take a look, and then make a decision. Right now, the actual AI software will alert you through your notifications of the phone. Well, there's a large vessel occlusion on a patient. Take a look, and then you take a look. Dr. Hage used the technology to determine that Roger needed to be transported to the ER in Uptown. Following that, they um, did tell me that um, um, I did have a blockage on the left side of my brain um, and that they uh, felt that I need to have emergency surgery. A decision that was met with confidence and faith. I felt at that point like my husband was going to be okay, that he was in good hands, and that everything that could be done to help his situation get better, to help his life was going to be done. With the Hoyles giving him the okay, Dr. Hage performed a surgery called thrombectomy. The goal was to try to get up uh, to the blocked vessel and basically remove the clot. Uh, we, we did that by accessing the blood vessel in the groin and um, advanced our catheter all the way from the groin all the way up into his uh, blood vessel on the left side inside the brain and that basically is kind of like a vacuum tube that we applied into the clot connected the tube to a special type of pump that vacuumed the clot and then fished it out of the brain all the way out and once we flushed the tube on the side table outside the patient we could see the clot come out. After you know about um, I think maybe 45 minutes uh, he was done. Um, I did not feel any pain at all. Smile then touch your right shoulder. Roger made a speedy recovery. Yeah, very good. 
Just days after brain surgery, he was sent home. It was almost, uh, for me, surreal because uh, my father um, had a stroke uh, when I was in sixth grade, and then he had an additional stroke uh, two years later, which left him partially paralyzed um, on his left side for the next 20 years of his life. So that was the first thing that came to my, my mind. There were certain things that um, my dad I did not get to experience with my dad. But Roger won't miss a beat making more memories with his four children. I was videotaping like every day and when doctors would come in. And so I would send it to the kids so they could see what was happening. Our daughter saw that and she's like, mommy, I want to do something like that one day. They were so inspired by the healthcare team. An inspiring experience for the entire Holes family. And Roger says he was sure of one thing. I know God still has much for me to do here. This cannot be, you know, the end. Has a happy ending. Now, a testament to faith. Since his stroke, Roger learned he has a condition called AFib, meaning he has an irregular heart rhythm. This ultimately caused his stroke. It's important to know your risk of a stroke. Doctors at Novant Health have made a list of factors you can and cannot control. It's right now on our website, wbtv.com slash webextras.